So in the last part of our lecture today about uh, linear algebra and computer graphics, what we want to do is talk about translating an object. So just to make it clear about what I mean, think about, for example, we have a unit square right here. And what we want to do is we want to be able to translate it two units to the right. So let's say here are two units and one unit up. So we want to be able to move our square over into this position right here. And obviously you want to do this if you're playing some sort of video game or something of that nature. So how would we be able to take something like this and use linear algebra to uh, be able to manipulate gra uh, computer graphics. Well, the first thing that we're going to see is that we're going to have a little bit of a, a problem because there's going to be no real matrix that will allow us to do this, right? So, however, no matrix A uh, will allow us to, will work, right? No matrix A will work. And you can kind of see why, because look at this corner right here. We want this point here at the zero, zero spot to go to this spot right over here, the two, one spot. Okay, so we want this matrix A to take the coordinate zero, zero and map it to the coordinate two, one, right? So we want to map this corner to this corner right here. But a times zero, zero will equal zero, zero for any matrix A. So it looks like we're kind of out of luck that we wouldn't be able to record the coordinates of the matrix, multiply it by A and get a matrix and get our little uh, graphic in a different spot. Okay. So how can we get around this problem? Okay, well, what we're going to do is we are going to kind of cheat, okay? Well, what do I mean by cheat? Well, what we're going to do is view, instead of the plane as just being uh, self-contained, what we're going to do is we're going to view the plane as inside of R3 in a very special situation, in a special place. So what I want you to think of is here, I'll draw a plane. Okay, so there's my plane, and this is going to be my R2. But where am I going to put it inside of R3? I'm going to put it in a very special place. So here. So here are my coordinates, axes of R3. So here's the X axis, here's the Y axis, and here's the Z axis. And what we're going to do is kind of take the plane R2 and lift it up to the case where Z is equal to 1. So you can think of taking, say, some point that you're used to. Oh, here, I'll make it red so we can see a little bit better. Normally, you would think of the point A, B in R2 down here. But what we're going to do is uh, let's think of the point as A, B, comma, 1. So any point that was kind of in the bottom plane down here, what we can do is just add a, one, a last coordinate of 1 to it, and then we can think of it inside of this plane which looks like an R2, but it's actually sitting inside of R3. Okay, so let's make this very clear here. So each point AB can be identified with what we're going to call its homogeneous coordinate with the homogeneous coordinate a comma b comma one okay and how does this help us all right well as a consequence we have the following so a translation which really amounts to taking a vector x y and sending it to x plus h and x plus oh, no, y plus k. So you're changing, you're always shifting the x coordinate by h and the y coordinate by k can be, can be written in homogeneous coordinates as 
now mapping the vector x, y, 1, and now you're mapping it to x plus h, y plus k, 1. Okay, and so believe it or not, this will help us get around the point by taking the square that would have been down here, bumping it up here, and we no longer have that, cor that corner, which was trapped at 0, 0. So we don't have this coordinate here, which is trapped at 0, 0. Now it's, tra it's put at 0, 0, 1, and we'll be able to kind of push it around on top of this plane. Okay, and so let me just put it in matrix form. So here we have the matrix form of the translation. It's given by 1, 0, H, 0, 1, K, 0, 0, 1, multiplied by the particular point, which is X, Y, 1. And this gets sent to X plus H, Y plus K, and 1. So we can represent a translation as a matrix transformation. So let's think about our particular problem we've been looking at today, which is the letter L, and we've already turned it into an italic L. And let's say we want to move it two units right, and let's say one unit down. Okay, so like before, I have my octave code all here, and I'll explain what this code is doing. So let's first put uh, the code into our document. So the first thing here that we're doing here is in the in the first row is oops sorry let me give me back my writing okay in the first row what we've done is we've added a row of ones added a row of ones so what we're doing here the matrix Q is containing all the coordinates of our italics one we're adding a row of ones at the bottom so that is making everything the homogeneous coordinates okay then this part here is the translation matrix that follows from what we just wrote above and we're moving it one unit uh, two units to the right and one unit down. And then we're going to multiply by the matrix G, and then we're going to plot the resulting coordinates. And again, we only need the first coordinates and the second coordinates. So this is the coming from the first row and the second row. And so let's, I don't know if it's timed out on me. There's my italic L. And let's go take my code. I still have it highlighted. Let's go paste it into my octave. And we let it run for a sec. And notice that it started roughly here, and it's moved two units to the right and one unit down, right? So there's where it started, and this is where it ended. Okay. So this actually happens, what happens, what we've just done here with the homogeneous coordinate actually can be extended more generally. So let's say that you had any home, uh, linear transformation. So it could have been a shear, it could have been a scalar, uh, a scalar uh, it could have been a rotation or a flip, and it's given by some sort of linear transformation and let A be the standard matrix. Then you can make a new partition matrix where in the top right-hand corner, you would put the matrix A. Uh, over here and here would be a matrix of zeros. And in the bottom corner, you'll put one what you get is the linear transformation with respect to homogeneous coordinates. So in other words, if you were doing some of those operations we talked about down here, you can still do them up here. The only difference is now you make your matrix a little bit bigger and you put a one in the bottom right corner and fill up the remaining rows and columns with zeros. Okay, so let me just add a little bit more detail here about what's going on. So what we're doing is we move the points in R2 into the copy of R2 in R3, right, with all the Z coordinates equaling to 1. So that means we're just making everything homogeneous. 
Okay. So you can take a look at this section in the textbook. There's lots of interesting things about uh, more uh, about computer graphics and some more details. But just kind of the key ideas I wanted you to take away is here is that you can use Octave to plot some graphics. What we're doing also is we're looking at some ways of visualizing linear transformations. And we've introduced homogeneous coordinates. We won't see it too much in this course, but it's, it's a feature that gets used a lot in different other areas of math. So that's it for today's lecture. There's actually only three parts for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will be starting on a new chapter in the next lecture. Have a good day.